Lot number 20 is a story entitled When the Sun Forgot to Rise and it's accompanied by a painting by a great family friend of ours, Francisco Centofanti, whose skill is off the scale amazing. I recommend anyone to check out his website and his work and thank him so sincerely for this donation, which is such a joy. When the sun forgot to rise. Once upon a time, the herds of reindeer were so vast that when spied from the heavens by the great eagles of the frozen plains, they looked like ants. The ground was so thick with ice that only the hardiest creatures survived the winter. And as for human communities, they were few and far between. No one with any sense would endure what was known by one and all as the great darkness. Months passed in which there was almost no sunlight. As one night slipped into the next, the people who endured the undurable would huddle together in tale tales. Or rather, they would tell a single tale which roamed on and on, as endless as the Arctic tundra beyond the wooden walls of the homestead. The tale, passed down from one generation to the next, was sacred because it contained the collected wisdom of the tribe. Once it had been told from beginning to end, the first strains of spring sunlight would break out across the horizon. Such was the length of the story, which was called the tale of Elipsia, that only the elders of the community were permitted to recount it, for only they had committed to memory the many twists and turns in all the details that were so central to the narrative. Of all the elders, the finest at recounting the tale of Elipsia was a woman who could remember the countless freezing and the summer when the great mountains thawed. She knew that the end of her days was coming, the time when she would forget the tale. Day after day she spoke the story through darkness, and as she did so, the next generation listened well, and they listened hard, because they knew that soon they would be required to pass on the tale as faultlessly to the youngers as had been done for them. At last her energy drained, her mind fading. The elder spoke the last sentence in a voice so frail it was barely heard at all. And then the queen drank the last of the mead, climbed onto her sleigh, and raced towards the sunrise. Everyone in the homestead who had listened through the darkened days applauded. When their cheers had waned, one of the children, a little girl called Floria, ran to the window. Wiping away the ice that caked the glass, she peered out into a curtain of blank that shrouded the world in which they lived. The dawn should be here by now, Floria called. It's supposed to be bright when the tale of Elipsia has ended. The child's father touched a fingertip to his chin. Perhaps we ended a little sooner than usual this year, he said with a smile. Let's wait until tomorrow, Floria's mother said. It's sure to get light tomorrow. So Floria and all the others waited. They waited and they waited, and they waited, and they waited. They waited a night, and then a day, and they waited a week, and then a pair of weeks. After that, they waited an entire month. But still, sunrise did not come. Concerned at the lack of sunlight, and the effect it would have on the herd, Floria's father touched a fingertip to his chin once again. I wonder what could have happened, he said. Floria stared hard into her father's eyes and blinked. It's obvious, she said. The sun has been asleep for so long that it's forgotten to rise. There was laughter as everyone enjoyed the words of the child. When the laughter was over and silence prevailed, Floria spoke once again. Tomorrow, I'm going to venture out into the darkness, she said. I'm going to remind the sun to rise. Again there was laughter, and again everyone enjoyed the words of the child. Next morning, Floria was up before her brothers and sisters. Slipping on her clothes, she went to the window, brushed off the ice, and peered out once again. Amazingly, it seemed even darker than before. With her parents and all the other children still asleep, Floria put on her heavy coat and went to the door. 
Then, feeling braver than she had ever felt before, she slipped outside. The darkness was so gloomy that the little girl could hardly see where she was going. But gradually, her eyes became a little more accustomed to the darkness. Weaving her way through the herd of reindeer, she made her way out from the encampment into the arctic wasteland that lay beyond. As she walked, she told herself fragments of the story, the tale of Elipsia, which she had listened to throughout the winter. One day, she told herself, I will speak the tale better than it has ever been spoken, and when I do, the naughty son won't dare stay asleep as it is done. It's not respectful. When I get to it, I'll give it a firm telling off. All morning, Floria paced towards the end of the tundra, her boots scraping against the ice and her face frozen from cold. She might have wished she had stayed home in the warmth, but the tale of Elipsia kept her going, as did the thought of scolding the sun. Hours after leaving the homestead, Floria began to wonder where the sun would be. After all, it wasn't as though it would be hiding in a cleft in the rocks or beneath a blanket of ice. However far she walked, she couldn't get to the end of the land, to where the next horizon lay. It was then that she had an idea. Marching out in search of the sun was showing weakness. If she was strong, a fearless little girl who wasn't afraid of scolding the sun, she would surely want the sun to come to her, rather than the other way around. So, digging her heels into the ice, she refused to take another footstep. Then, rubbing a hand to her chest to warm up her lungs, she yelled, You're a very, very naughty little son, and you're to wake up at once. If you don't, I'll get very angry with you. Do you hear me? Silence. Silence, but for the distant roar of an avalanche. Floria yelled a second time, far louder and more stridently than before. But again, there was silence except for one of the reindeers calling out far away. Her heels still dug deep into the ice, Floria thought long and hard. If I was a naughty little son that had fallen fast asleep, she said to herself, what would it take to wake me? Thinking harder than she had ever thought of anything before, she thought of how her mother and father would beg her to get up on the deepest, darkest winter mornings, and how she would want to stay in bed. Most of all, she pondered she hated it when they scolded her. The only way she would agree to get up out of her snug little bed was when her mother sang to her. That's what I'll do, Floria said to herself. I'll sing the sun awake. So, filling her lungs once again with frozen morning air, she sang and she sang. And she sang and she sang. She sang of birds, of forests, and of rivers. And she sang of little chicks, of mountains, and of eagles high in the summer sky. And as she sang... Something remarkable happened. The faintest rays of sunlight warmed against the night sky and slowly began to break across the horizon. Still Floria sang, her young voice charming the stream of light. By now the sunshine was so dazzling that the little girl's eyes were burning. Having jumped up and down with delight, she remembered her manners. Calling out to the horizon, Adorned with a glowing orb of gold, she yelled out, Thank you, dearest son, for waking from your slumber and for bringing beauty to our world. Every day that you shine above me, I'll thank you as I'm doing now. And when you go to sleep again after working so hard through weeks and months, I'll remember to wake you. So don't worry about oversleeping if it happens again. Then, her arms and legs throwing out the longest of shadows, Floria tramped home to tell her family how it had been her who had woken up the sun.